Hello everyone and welcome to Vlogmas Day 14. Good morning. I feel like I'm finally getting a handle on this Vlogmas thing in terms of my schedule. Maybe that's just because this is Monday morning and I just had a weekend to do a bunch of stuff. <sighs> this is the last week of school before winter break. Very exciting. Five days and then we get two whole weeks off plus three weekends total. That's pretty fabulous. I don't have a whole lot planned for that time yet. I would like to go back to the Galleria and get some better footage of that for you, but otherwise I don't know what else. This week I have several things coming up. Handbag unboxing, shoes unboxing, showing you some jewelry, recipes. Hold on, there's a Baron at the door. Hello, Baron. Where's your sister? She's still sleeping? Oh, you're ready for advent calendars, I see. Excuse me, get away from my bag, please. And speaking of, bag of the day is the Speedy 25 in Damier Azure. I have it all decked out. I have this lottery bag charm that was given to me by YouTube friend Lisa a few years ago. I have a Louis Vuitton luggage tag in Vachetta with an A stamped in gold. And I have this strap added to it which is from Dress Up Your Purse. I will have them linked below as well as my discount code, but that's how the strap looks on the shoulder. So it's a nice length there to be able to turn this into a crossbody bag. I like that a lot. Not a crossbody bag, a shoulder bag. My mother is supposed to come over after I get off work today. She said she has a gift to bring for the dogs and we're going to talk about Christmas plans. So we'll see what happens then. Now, it's advent calendar time. Kindness calendar first today. Hello, Baron. Today is the 14th. You found it for me. Good job. Looks like a track field there. Are you all right, sir? There's no food in this one. During a 5,000 meter heat at the 2016 Olympic Games, Nikki Hamlin tripped awkwardly and took rival Abby D'Agostino with her in the fall. Despite being the one, despite being the one tripped, Abby stayed and helped Nikki to her feet, only to fall down herself, writhing in pain due to a serious knee injury. The roles now reversed as Nikki stayed with Abby, encouraging her to get back on her feet and finish the race, which they both did, winning the world's hearts along the way. Oh dear. Now there's a Roxy at the door. Hello, Roxy. How are you? Hello. We're in the middle of Advent calendars, Roxy. Come on, Roxy. Join us. Wow, okay. We're reading the kindness calendar, Roxy. You missed a very heartwarming story. Mission 27, not only Olympians need a helping hand. Ask a senior in your family or neighborhood if they need help with anything. Cleaning the bathroom, cook, pick up groceries, rake the lawn, shovel snow, whatever it is, you're the right person for the job. I am the right person for a job. I help a senior out every single day. Mission 28, ask an immigrant where they come from and learn about their country and culture. Well, we certainly have a lot of immigrants in Houston. We're the most diverse city in the entire country, even more so than New York City. I worked at a school once where, oh, what was it? Over 50 or 70 something languages were spoken. Let's get back to advent calendars. So what are these, you ask? These are shoe crystals. On the back, they have little clips. There's one there and one there. And you clip these to the toe of your shoe. Let me demonstrate. Put the clip right here, flip it down. Now your shoe has crystals on it. Isn't that pretty? It reminded me of the Manolo Blahniks with the crystals, but for much cheaper. So I thought I might get those and give them a try. I got them off Amazon. I will link them below. I think that looks nice. It's really pretty. Here's how the other one looks. Okay, you guys, are you ready for your advent calendars? Anybody? Baron? Ready? 
Roxy, you better come up in the chair. Come on, Roxy. Door 14. Look at her. She's impressive. Roxy, so excited. Roxy, come on. Come on. There we go. All right. Maybe don't stick your head in it. There's a bunch of stuff in there, and they're about to have breakfast. I'm going to save that. All right, you two can go eat breakfast now. There they go. I will release you. Go. I just got home from work, and the dog's grandma, my mother, just met us downstairs because she had a gift for the dogs, and I was thinking, why is she bringing them a gift two weeks before Christmas? That's odd. Check out what it is. She got them these adorable little cookie tester bandanas. They fit around their collar, and they say Santa's favorite wiggle butt on the back. They are reversible. Isn't that cute? So I'm going to put these on them, and they're going to wear them now every time they do advent calendars and every other time that we're having vlogmas because they're too much trouble to take them on and off every day. Also, let's see what's in my bag because I have a few special things in here today. Move these aside. Right on top is the gift I got from my secret Santa at work. We're doing the faculty secret Santa this week. It's a chocolate orange and it has popping candy inside. What? So we're gonna try that soon. This is why I have to show you what's in my bag because some of this stuff's gonna disappear before the end of the week. I also got this from a student. This is a little gift card box. The reindeer comes often as an ornament. There are Ghirardelli chocolates on the back. The gift card is to Amazon, which will definitely be used. I have a pack of tissues. I have my Louis Vuitton Agenda PM gifted to me a few years ago by Winnie B. LV, one of my favorite Louis Vuitton pieces. It gets used every single day. My cell phone with the cracked screen protector somewhere. Ah, oh, there you can see all the cracks in it which have been there for a very long time and I'm just too lazy to change it out. Anyone else? My Chanel drawstring pouch inside there. I've shown you this recently. That has vlogging essentials, batteries, memory cards, the little light. Wow, it's bright. Move that aside. What's next? My pochette accessoire. Nope, my mini pochette that matches the bag in Dalmier Azure. I hate one-handed filming. Oh, look at that. YouTube makeup. A little Chanel brush. I love that thing. It's great. What's next? What's next? This is a hard shell case for my hard drive, portable hard drive with the cables and memory card reader. There's another battery down there and probably another memory card. What's next? Oh, I took the Coach Dreamer wallet today. It's the first time I've used this. It has a pocket there and then it snaps open. Got my cards, bunch of receipts. Very nice little wallet. I thought it matched pretty well. And there's one more thing in this envelope. Oh, a Target gift card fell out. It's a very adorable card with a dachshund on it. Also a kitty cat, but check out the dachshund. Super duper cute. It's in a sweater and everything, and it's stealing the snowman's one mitten. Or is it putting them in on the snowman? It's a dachshund, so it's probably stealing the mitten. Not sure where the other one is. Probably already took it and buried it somewhere. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything in my bag. Now I have a special message for you from Time Warp Autumn showing you how to make my delicious, fabulous, and not very difficult marinara sauce. I'm finally gonna cook this pasta with marinara sauce I keep telling you about. I have the ingredients here in the order that I'm going to use them. And of course I've forgotten the pasta again. Please hold. Okay, now I have all the ingredients. I'm gonna start by cooking the sausage, then I'll remove that from the pan, start the marinara sauce with olive oil, then garlic, then add the tomatoes, the tomato paste, which will help thicken the sauce. Italian seasoning, I forgot one more ingredient, and this one is crucial, red wine. That adds a richness and depth of flavor, you don't wanna forget that. And then that will simmer for a few hours, 
and I'll add the pasta. I guess actually I'll just go ahead and prep the sausage and not cook it yet because that needs to simmer for a few hours. The basic pasta sauce with just these ingredients and not the wine was taught to me by an Italian-American who learned the recipe from her mother who was Italian and immigrated here. I've since tweaked it some by adding the wine and I add meat. This is the first time I'm adding sausage. I usually do a pound of lean hamburger beef ground. Last time I added too much of the Italian seasoning and I wanted to sweeten it up so I added brown sugar and oh my god it was fantastic. So try that. That's a secret recipe that I'm sharing with the world now. First we have to dump this can into this bowl and chop up all the whole tomatoes. Make sure you have clean hands for that. Turn the heat on, a little more than medium, not quite high. First thing you do is add a little bit of olive oil, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. There are no measurements here, by the way. Okay, I'm feeling the heat now, so I'm gonna add my garlic. I get the jarred garlic just because it's easier, but fresh is definitely the way to go, and I am not sparse with the garlic. There's gonna be a lot of pasta sauce, and this is an Italian meal. You wanna keep that garlic moving around so it doesn't burn, and keep an eye on it because garlic cooks pretty quickly. Time to add the tomatoes. By the way, these were Italian whole peeled Roma tomatoes. Give that a stir to incorporate the garlic and get it off the bottom of the pan. Now I'll add the tomato paste. And the sauce is starting to boil, so I'm gonna lower the heat to a simmer. One of the things about this sauce is when it starts bubbling and boiling, it starts splattering as well, so you have to be careful with that. Give that a good stir to mix that paste in with the rest of the sauce. I'm not sure that the tomato paste was part of the original recipe. I feel like it was not, but every time I made this without the paste and served it to people, they would comment about how runny the sauce was. So I started adding the paste and that just made all the difference. Add some salt. I use a little salt grinder and a pepper grinder. That's one thing I don't have in my kitchen collection yet is a really nice wooden pepper grinder and a salt grinder as well. I've wanted one for years and years and have never found the perfect one. Except I finally did find the perfect one a few years ago. I think it was in the Williams Sonoma catalog and it was by Peugeot and they were several hundred dollars each. But of course. Also add the Italian seasoning. Give that a good stir. The other secret ingredient is the wine. This is the Sangiovese. And there's not a certain amount I put in. That looks pretty good. Watch how the color changes as I stir this. It was this bright red and it's going to be darker now with that dark wine and it's so rich and beautiful and the wine just really makes it for me. All right, I'm going to bring that back to a boil, so I'll raise the heat a bit. Now that that is boiling again, I'm going to give it a stir and then reduce the heat to simmer or low. I'll put the lid on, but I'm leaving it cracked a little bit so that it can release the steam. And then that will simmer for two or three hours and we'll do the next steps. Now this is a pretty simple recipe, but if you don't want to go through all this trouble and you're more of a marinara sauce in a jar kind of person, my suggestion to you 
to make it better would be to pour your sauce into the pot just like this. Add some olive oil, add some garlic, add some seasoning, and I promise you it'll taste better. Add some wine, maybe add some brown sugar, who knows? But don't just use it from the jar. It's never as good that way as it could be if you just add a couple more things, which is very simple. While the sauce is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and start the sausage. I'll turn the heat on about a medium medium low. Usually when I cook meat, I don't use any kind of butter or oil or anything like that. I just put the meat into a hot pan or start it on a cold pan and warm it all up together. But today I'm going to add a little bit of butter for some flavor, although I'm not sure how much flavor that's really going to give with the amount of sausage I'm using. that butter is browning a little bit and glistening. I'm gonna add all this sausage. I've sliced it into fairly thin slices and then cut each of those in half. That should make it pretty easy to get a good piece of pasta and sausage on the fork. Just wanna toss that in the sausage to get it coated with the butter and then let it simmer, stir it every minute or two maybe. This sausage is already cooked, but I wanna brown it and bring out the flavors by warming it up more. That looks done to me, and there's a lot of grease in there, you can tell. I don't want to put that into the marinara, so I'm going to use the slotted spatula to transfer the sausage into the marinara sauce here. Just fold the sausage into the marinara sauce. Put the lid back on, cracked again, and allow that to simmer some more and let the marinara sauce soak up the flavor of the sausage and vice versa. All right, my water's finally boiling, so I'm gonna pour in the pasta. Add a good amount of salt that'll help keep it from sticking and then give that a stir. next morning now and I wanted to tell you something about that pasta. First of all, it turned out well. Now for me, I thought that the sausage was not quite the right sausage for it and a different sausage like an Italian sausage would have been better. However, when Paul tasted it, he loved it immediately and as he ate it, he actually told me he thinks it's the best pasta dish I've ever made, which Wow. Now I will say every time I make that marinara, I change something so it's never the same. I never make the same dish twice and I'm always experimenting with it, adding different meats or different flavors, the brown sugar, the whatever it could be. And of course you add different wines, you add different proportions of things so it's always going to taste a little different. But that base with the olive oil, the garlic, the tomatoes, the tomato paste, and the Italian seasoning, start with that and you'll be good. And good luck to you. If you try it, let me know. Let me know what you think about it. All right, they've now got their official cookie tester bandanas on. They're super official and cool and cute. And now it's time for cookies. Who's ready for the cookies? Anybody? What have y'all done to this bed? It's a mess. Is this what you do while I'm gone all day? Let's go get cookies anyway, come on. Okay, door number 12 still has two cookies. And there was a cookie left in the door from this morning that Baron just ate. And door 13 has a cookie. So, thinking, sorry this is a blurry. 
thinking Roxy gets that. Whoa, okay. Couldn't even get the thought out. All right. Wow. All right, this one's too barren. And this one's too Roxy. Okay. My goodness. I have a review of the chocolate orange. One, it is absolutely delicious. When I was growing up, I never liked chocolate and orange together, but I have grown to appreciate it as an adult. I think I've only ever had one of these chocolate oranges in my life before. Out of the box, it was wrapped in this foil and it is pre-sliced, but I had to get a knife to get it apart because it's kind of sticky with the orange stuff. Each piece is kind of flat on the one side, but then it looks like an orange slice on the other, which is a beautiful design. And then you can see the little crackly bits. Those are the Pop Rocks. And they didn't do anything when you're actually chewing and eating the orange chocolate slice, but afterwards some of that Pop Rocky stuff is stuck in your teeth and then it starts doing its thing. If you don't know what Pop Rocks are, you must have grown up with Paul because he never knew what they were until like last year I ordered some for him and put them in his stocking. Did I film that? I don't remember. His reaction was pretty good if I recall. His reaction was pretty good as I recall. Pop Rocks are these tiny little sugar candies. You put them in your mouth. I think you don't want to chew them. You just want to let them sit there and start dissolving. And then they start exploding. And I don't know the science behind that, but it's fireworks in your mouth. It's surprising if you've never had them before. Yeah, there's not much to the, the taste really. It's just a tactile sensation. Boom, 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 all inside your mouth. And I think that about wraps it up for today. So let's end on that high note. I just remembered one more thing I wanted to tell you on my way home. I saw this lady get out of her black Mercedes, open the back of her car, and take out this Ziploc bag full of things and hand it to a homeless person. Isn't that just what we talked about in one of the kindness calendar missions? So I don't know if that was just some random person or if she's one of my devoted viewers and subscribers. But just in case she is, I wanted to say I saw you and good job. And now I sign off. Until tomorrow.